What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. Made in America by way of Indonesia. This is the PRS SE Custom 24 Quilt Top. What we always do here on the channel is I like to go through the specs just really briefly and then we'll go into some sound samples and the demo tracks so will stick around for that. First off, mahogany body, so you know it's heavy. It's got a good weight to it. Maple top and a quilt maple veneer on top of that. This body here is actually three different segments, three pieces instead of two. Eh, not a big deal. It's okay. Three piece maple neck. No volute there. They've got the tilted headstock, which is nice. Uh, ebony fingerboard. 24 frets, jumbo frets. They are not stainless steel. That's okay. We'll let that one slide. And the beautiful binding all the way around the body and around the neck. I just love the look of that. It's really nice. Then you've got PRS's own brand of nut and the PRS patented tremolo, which is a six point trim. It's kind of like a fender strat trim, basic system, you know, same system as that. Three way selector switch, master volume, master tone with the push pull for the spanky split coil tones, which we love here on the channel. Now these pickups are the 8515S set, which is essentially the same pickups that they put in their core line, so that's really nice if you care for that sound. I have barely had to retune this thing at all, and I've been tracking it for a few days and playing it, and it just stays in tune, solid as a rock. So without further ado, let's get to that demo track now. Most PRS guitars have the set neck, as far as I know, and uh, it looks really nice. This guitar has a 10 inch uh, fingerboard radius, which is really nice and very comfortable. And again, this is their wide thin neck, and same as the one on the Mark Holcomb, which I reviewed recently. I'll leave a link to that video here or here. Uh, that was the seven string version. The same thing though, the wide thin neck. It's not very thin, and it's a little wider than I'm used to but it's really comfortable overall, especially for the six string version. It has a nice thickness to it that's just, it's just right. It's very comfortable and I really enjoy playing this thing. The edges of the frets, perfectly done. I mean, absolutely perfect. They feel like they've been done by a machine. They're just spot on, there are no sharp edges. They all look completely uniform and just perfectly machined and uh, <laughs> love it. That is something I would expect for a thousand dollar guitar from any manufacturer. I would expect to have flawless uh, fret work. And this comes in clutch. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, as you're aware here on the channel, I nitpick on things. I like to point things out that aren't my favorite features, but maybe you like them, but I like to let you be aware of what they are if you're gonna get into something like this. Now, this guitar currently retails for $1,000 here in the US, and for that, you get a lot of spec, a lot of good features, um, just a well-built guitar, really well-built, very comfortable. The fit and finish on, on this thing is really, from what I can tell, absolutely perfect. There's no nicks, there's no funny spots or anything with the finish. It is really, really well done. Uh, this is made in their Indonesian factory, the Core Tech Court, essentially, factory, which, you know, you probably know that Court Factory puts out a lot of nice stuff for a lot of different brands. Uh, things, though, that I really don't get along with too well, like the nickel silver frets. I just want to see stainless steel frets on every guitar. That's just me. Uh, locking tuners would be nice. You know, it's a simple upgrade for another 80 to 100 bucks to get a nice set of Godot or some other brand of locking tuners to swap those out if you want to. It's not a huge deal, but it just makes string changes so much faster. Uh, I would probably go with a graph tech nut as well. Again, it's not necessary. You know, 15 to 20 bucks, swap that out. Done. Lastly, though, uh, the neck, it, it's extremely comfortable, but it does have the same finish as the body, so it kind of has that gloss or semi gloss finish to it, so it gets a little sticky if your hands sweat. <laughs> This is their 25 inch scale length, which is a little shorter than the Fender scale length, but that's okay, not a big deal. 24 frets instead of 22. I like that, so you get the full two octaves. Uh, these are not stainless steel frets. For a thousand bucks, not made in the US, you're not getting stainless steel frets, unfortunately, with PRS. Uh, another thing that I would mention too is these are non locking tuners. They work very well, they're very smooth. I've had no problems with them. In fact, this guitar stays in tune really, really well. The trem, which is very nice, has a nice big heavy block, which you can probably see in there. Nice big thick metal block in there. Gives it some heft, some weight, some resonance, I assume. Uh, the one problem I have with this trem is this arm. It's very cheap feeling. It's like, it feels like cheap aluminum or something, I don't know. And the plastic tip on it, the little nib, is you can feel the mold in the middle, the line with it's kind of molded together. It just feels very cheap to me and I'm surprised that they actually have such a low quality arm. Uh, the way it goes in though is really nice. It's just like a Godot 510 bridge. It just slides in and it can be as loose or as tight as you want. There's a little set screw in the back to uh, tighten that up so you can have it stay in place or have it flop around if you like that. Uh, it works fine, but again, it just looks and feels very cheap. Just the arm, the trim itself is gorgeous really nice very heavy smooth you know the saddles work well uh, again no tuning issues the intonation on this guitar has been incredible right out of the box so that was very nice yeah but that trem arm is just very cheap and i feel like they could you know for a couple of bucks upgrade that to something more substantial a little heavier a little shinier too it's just kind of bleh, whatever yeah but overall i'm really digging the prs guitars like i said it's my second one i've had here in the studio i mean it's not made in the u.s but you could fool me. If it said USA on the back, I wouldn't know the difference. This thing is really, really a nice guitar, and uh, it's a lot of fun to play. And that shorter scale length, not a big deal. You know, I prefer the, the Fender scale length or something a little bit longer than that, but uh, 25 inch, not a big deal. I get along with it pretty well. Okay, so let's go through some sound tone samples now. Uh, starting with the bridge pickup, and I'm gonna run through all the regular positions, and then we'll do the split coil tones afterwards. So. Full humbucker bridge, here we go. Middle, which is both humbuckers and full. Neck. Now we'll do the split coils, which is, uh, for, the, for the bridge, it's just the inner coil by itself. Middle, which is the two inner coils. And then just the inner coil from the uh, neck pickup.
I'm really digging this one, guys. I kind of don't want to get rid of it, but it's on loan from Zounds.com who were uh, so gracious as to lend me this guitar so I could check it out for you guys here today. If you have some interest in looking at this guitar and probably possibly want to get it for yourself, I've got links down below to zounds.com. Maybe this is the one for you. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about PRS, what you think about this particular model. Uh, I think for $1,000, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. And if PRS is your jam and that's the kind of guitar you're looking to get, you know, it does a modern thing as well as the vintage style, the classic rock style. It, pretty much does everything. I mean, you may want to swap out the pickups for something heavier if you're into like more of the modern metal stuff. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today with this PRS. Hope you enjoyed it. Definitely hit that subscribe button on your way out. Hit the like button if you haven't already done so. And you may not be aware of it, but you might not be subscribed. Even though you're watching all my videos, YouTube is recommending all my new videos to you, um, but you might not be subscribed. So it's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna change the algorithm at all. And it does me a huge, solid. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm out of here. See ya!